it seems that uh, South Africa goes from high to low with almost nothing in between. Uh, when it's 2010 and we've all got our vuvuzelas, we're going crazy. Uh, and then we go into load shedding and government corruption and we're all woe is me. Uh, look, there are things uh, that are wrong with this, this country. There's a lot that could be fixed. That's probably true of every country in the mm -hmm. world, to be honest. Uh, but so what? How, how do we get beyond that? I mean, Carl, both you and I are passionately South African. Uh, both of us have options to not be here. We've both chosen to be here. Uh, well, why are you still here? I am here because of all the challenges, not in spite of them. So for me, those are great opportunities. They often frustrate me, they often irritate me, but I see them as challenges. I see them not as end of the world challenges. And I see it as a great opportunity to make a real difference in my own life and other people's lives and a real opportunity to enrich myself and others economically. So I think if you, if you want to make money and you want to make a difference, there are very few places um, as good a place as South Africa to, to achieve both those goals. It, it, it is amazing. You really don't have to go far or, or work hard to find opportunities mm. to make uh, a real difference. Mm. And at the same time, as, as you say, do it in a way that gives us a magnificent lifestyle. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, everything from, from the weather mm. to the, the country itself and then, and then the, the people and the vibe uh, in the nation. Yeah, and for me, it's also it's challenging yourself about, the, about your perceptions. And so I had an example years ago because I used to get really irritated by people at the side of the road, knocking on my window, wanting to sell me stuff, carrying on, until somebody said to me, isn't South Africa amazing? You don't have to go to a shopping center. It's just all there. <laughs> so it was a joke, but it just, it showed me. So now I see it when there's load shedding, you know, the first day or two when it takes, you know, hours to get home, everybody's frustrated. You then get over it and you see some real innovation in the traffic, what, what people are doing to cope with it. And I think South Africans are really bad at giving ourselves credit. Yes. Um, for, for moving through stuff. I think we're really bad in acknowledging that we had one of the worst systems in the world for so long and we came through that. Yeah. Um, impossibly. We came through and we came through it really well. And so it's a few short years post that. We've got to reclaim some of that, pat on the back, gung-ho, have some fun, laugh at ourselves. It's not end of the world. It's inconvenient, not end of yeah. the world. And almost all of the major problems that we're facing as we record this video in 2015 will A, be solved reasonably soon. We know that the electricity crisis is mm. not forever. We, mm. we know what's coming. We mm. can't speed it up mm. because it's a process, but it's going to end. And by the way, I, obviously not everybody has the means to do this, but those people who have the means, you can sort yourself mm. out. I mm. mean, I, the, the, my biggest mistake was not investing in a generator company mm. in the middle of last <laughs> year. Uh, those guys are made of fortune. Absolutely, yeah. uh, you know, and water's going to be the next. Yeah. So, you know, and this is, I think, how South Africans actually think, yeah. really. Uh, there's a problem, let's find yeah, a plan, let's yeah. fix it. And that's what I love about yeah. South Africa. And I think that there'll be people out there challenging you and me when we say, you know, we, we can't speed it up because they probably will speed it up. They'll come with yes. a way to, to yes. speed up the this, this solution from an energy crisis. Um, and for me, it's also changed the way I live my life. So I, on principle, haven't bought a generator. I'm still trying to work out what principle, but I haven't got a generator. <laughs> but it's forced me to plan so that I know yes. and I get very efficient notifications. And so I do different things. Um, and, um, and it's been interesting. I've developed other parts of my life and other parts of my social circle, which I wouldn't have done if I had uh, lights on. So uh, what then do South Africans do? Uh, you know, part of it is an attitude adjustment, uh, which I think is quite easy for mm. most South Africans. And uh, neither you nor I are, are putting anything, burying yeah, anything. We know the corruption. Yeah. We know Huge problems. the difficulties. We know the infrastructure issues. Uh, and, and so we're not choosing to ignore it, but we're just asking, what do we actually do? So yeah. what do you think we should be doing? So for me, the biggest one is self-education. So I get frustrated with myself and others when you comment on stuff when you don't have the facts. So, you know, energy crisis, you know, have you been onto the ESCOM website and do you know yes. what the plans are? Yes. Um, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Do you know who are our representatives in Parliament? And so for me... It's, uh, let me dive yeah. in there, because I think that's practical. If you don't know the name of yeah. your local yeah. MP, how can you complain Absolutely. about government representation? Absolutely. They're waiting for you to yes. contact them, and it's not difficult to find yeah. those details. And it's your right, and yes. your responsibility as yeah. a citizen. So local level, for sure. Nationally, you know, if you don't know, if you can't name five members of parliament or five members of our, of our cabinet, the cabinet yes. then I don't think that you have much of a right to complain. Yeah. They are there serving us, our representatives. Find out the names, challenging. And age. by the way, if you have 
have a complaint, have you directed it mm. to them? We often say government isn't listening. Are you even talking? Yeah. Um, you know, I've engaged with a few cabinet ministers and I've had reaction from mm. their office. Mm. Um, uh, many of their offices are, in fact, very efficient. Yeah. Uh, at DG level, we've got some remarkable people in government yeah. and it's, it might be good to go and find out who they are. Yeah, and I think just one other example of what you practically can do is, and I know this is true of you as well, Graham, I purposefully bought an eToll so that I am justified in demaning service, complaining, yes. Um, understanding where the money goes. Well, uh, well, they now, make now, it a bit difficult. Now, now, now we've probably got half the people switching off that they know we're both ETOL uh, for I, yeah, but. <laughs> but it's so that you can, yes. you know, I feel justified then. I vote, so I expect yes. service. I can complain, I can demand stuff. I know people's names, so I phone them up. And if you said that my electricity was going to be off at the stage or on at the stage and it's not, yeah. I, you know, let, engage. Let me ask the, yeah. ask the question. Uh, I think the other way that people can get themselves educated is to actually learn a little bit more about the country. Hmm. There are some people who live in their literal gated hmm. communities, hmm. which I know both you and I have chosen hmm. not to do. Um, but it, it, it's, it's more than that. So when last did you go into a township mm. for, for lunch? Mm. Uh, Villakazi mm. Street in Soweto is mm. magnificent. Mm. When last, if you're a, a Gauteng resident, when last did you go to Maboneng or so, with those central precinct Absolutely. districts? So get yourself a bit of education uh, about the country. I, I also am amazed when I hear people saying, why do people still vote for the ANC? It, clearly, they haven't driven out of their suburb. Mm. Because if you travel, as we did to the Kruger Park mm. a few weeks ago, and you drive through uh, those rural areas, and you see everybody's got a brick mm. house, mm. there's solar panels mm. on mm. every roof, there's mm. geysers there. Mm. He said, that's why, mm. because this government has delivered. Mm. Mm. Uh, maybe not as efficiently as it should have, and maybe not Correct. everywhere where it should have. But this government hasn't done nothing mm. for the country. And, and if we're never going to understand or engage with the country if we don't understand yeah. it. And I think just extending the education of the country is also using other aspects of the country. And what I mean by that is, how many people go to the theatre? How many people go to their local theatre, national theatre, understand what's happening? Precious few. How many people support local acts, local um, festivals? Local musicians. Yeah, yeah, you know, SA Tourism and a number of other bodies put out fantastic information. Um, and so we have a wealth of opportunities. And I think if people engaged more with that, we would engage more with each other. So I see that you're black, so you're different, or I see that you're a woman, so you're different. But if we're both at you know, the rugby match or the soccer match and we share that passion, you know, we forget some of those differences. Yeah. So it's, you know, put yourself into those, those opportunities. Yeah. The other thing I think that uh, people can do in South Africa is to support employment. Yeah. Uh, this is obviously the single biggest issue. If we had zero employment, almost all of our other problems would be very yeah. minor. Uh, and so if you are in a position, maybe it's uh, just at home where you can employ somebody to be in the garden or in the home, um, are you employing people where mm. you can? And are you paying them mm. more than you're forced to? Mm. You know, that, that for me there should be no debate about minimum wage mm. um, when it comes to mm. who we're employing in our homes. We should be paying much more than that because each one of those people is supporting 20 mm. others. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, sorry, if, if you're a small yeah. business person or exactly. even a big business person, you know, employ more people than you, yeah. than you need to, yeah. essentially. Pro problems force opportunity and so, you know, create employment. Um, think entrepreneurially. Yeah. I think there are lots yeah. of opportunities for big business and for individuals. Force yourself to come up with a new innovation. Start small. Get somebody who's got nothing. Give them an opportunity. Most times people rise yeah. to the challenge. Um, or, so. or take, if you're a big business, take portions of your business and outsource them to a small, small yeah. business that then can flourish by getting new people in. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's, uh, there's some exciting opportunities ahead. Lots of frustrations. Um, but it's, yeah. as you say, a country we choose to be in. Um, and it's crazy. It's messed up. It's challenging. It's difficult. But it is, uh, it's fantastic. And I'm really excited to make a difference, make money and, uh, and contribute. Yeah. I'm an African by birth, but I'm also an African by choice. Mm. And uh, I definitely want to work together with people who want to create a great future for the country. We're here to stay. We're here to make it work. I'm sure we will.